Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin and I am the host of the podcast and we have been taking a kind of a little turn in the direction of the podcast lately. Normally we talk about fitness mindset and nutrition, but because of the coronavirus, I wanted to kind of highlight and showcase some of the local businesses that are in the area who you probably don't know about. So I have been interviewing different people with different businesses in the hopes that maybe you will support these small businesses. Not necessarily now if you if you can now, that's awesome, but if you can't now, definitely after the quarantine, just check them out. I hope these interviews are helpful to you and to let you know that we are all in this together. And have no fear because I will be giving you all the juiciness of fitness, nutrition, and mindset in upcoming podcasts. So today we are talking to Linda Milano, and let's just dive into today's podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm happy to be sitting here with Linda Milano, owner of CFB Promotional Products as my special guest today. And recently what I've been trying to do with my podcast is basically to interview people and to kind of share their story. Um, Hopefully it will empower you to take steps forward in whatever choices or decisions that you are kind of hesitant on. And especially because we are in the middle of the coronavirus, so it is April 7th of 2020, um, depending on when you're listening to this, we are in the thick of the coronavirus. We are in lockdown. We are not allowed to leave our houses. And it's very interesting um, on both perspectives as far as like some people are frightened and scared and then some people are absolutely fine and going after their goals and like nothing has gone wrong. So my goal in having people come on the podcast is, again, to kind of share their story and to let you know we are all in this together. So welcome, Linda, to the podcast. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. All right. So tell me a little bit about your promotional products company. So CFB Promotional Products was started in 2014 after I had lost my dad. Um, Prior to that, I had uh, been in the industry for 15 years and um, loved doing the work that I had done, helping clients with all types of marketing materials from printing collateral to pens with a logo and everything that you would use for branding your company or organization. Um, In 2008 was another economy bump in the road and things you know, went south for a long time. And um, in 2000, oh yeah, 2012, the economy had gotten better, but not enough to sustain the company that I was working for during that time. And I was laid off. Um, I quickly found another job in the same industry. And I do enjoy what I do, finding creative marketing solutions for all types of organizations. And when my dad was diagnosed with cancer, he often would tell me um, he had to be his own boss and he needed to um, do things his way. Now, of course, uh, being female, starting my own business was never something that I ever dreamed of or thought was possible. And after he had passed away, six months after his diagnosis in January 2014, he had left my sister and I a small life insurance policy. So after all the burial expenses and stuff, there was probably a few thousand dollars left. Mm -hmm. And the day the check came, I did not want it. Um, I wanted my dad back. And still, you know, looking back, I would obviously much rather be spending time with my dad. But that was something that he wanted us to have. And that was communicated by my husband. He said, put it in the bank. And when the right thing to do comes up, you'll know what to do with that money. Just put it there. It'll be safe. And you'll know. So fast forward to six more months of unemployment and job seeking. I was, it was Memorial day, 2014. Mm -hmm. I had been offered two different jobs after six interviews that week. And one job was in a completely different industry, in the construction industry, mm-hmm. doing sales and everything seemed perfect. The salary was right. The commute was 15 minutes from home. Um, and in all sense of purposes, it seemed like the perfect job. 
except something in my gut just told me it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And the other position I was offered was only 10 hours a week doing promotional products and marketing materials. Um, Obviously I couldn't survive off of 10 hours a week. I needed something more, but it's where my passion lied. Um, So I asked for an interview with that same uh, company and it started asking questions of um, why he had offered me the position and did he see any potential for growth and, you know, more hours. And they were things that kind of came into my decision. And one of the questions I asked him was, why would I come work for you and build up your business when I can do it for myself? And in that moment, it was that light bulb moment and all of the conversations I had with my dad come flying back. And then that money that I had completely forgot about Mm -hmm. came back. Um, And I said, I need to start my own business. And in the confidence of knowing that that was the right thing to do, but flooded with all types of fears and uncertainty (laughs) and, and things that I never dreamed would be my life. Yeah. I decided that I needed to give it, you know, a shot. Um, so I drove home preparing a conversation with my husband because it was definitely something that was going to affect our family. And I remember coming home and saying to him, Hey, Chris, we need to talk. And <laughs> the pure like fear on his face. Because right, like, right. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, like fear, but knowing that this was important. And we sat down and talked. I said, and I remember the conversation. It was, listen, I don't know what's going to happen and I need your support. And if you're uncomfortable, I appreciate that and respect that. And we'll do what we need to do. However, I think I need to start my own business. I love what I do. I want to be in control of my own future Mm -hmm. and not be at the mercy of which is kind of ironic right now, <laughs> considering all that's going on and it's out of our hands. But I wanted to be in control of the way that I helped clients as well, because working for that family owned business for 15 years, I did enjoy everything I did to help clients and make them successful. But it was more about the service side and seeing them be successful, not necessarily about the money. And when I, in between start being unemployed and being laid off from that job, I also have worked for another company for six months and it wasn't the right fit for me. And I try to take the positives out of everything Mm -hmm. that takes place. Um, I can't say that it was my favorite job. (laughs) We've we've all had some of the (laughs) jobs. (laughs) But what I learned from that experience was that I truly did care about what people were using and it wasn't about the dollars spent. It needed to be more about how to make them successful. So, you know, again, I talked to my husband and, you know, he said, I'm behind you a hundred percent. And then I started CFB promotional products. That's awesome. I always feel like things happen for a reason. So like, I know when I look back on my life and I look at things, now. And I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. That's one of the steps that took me to be where I am today. And it's interesting when you tell your story that, you know, not again, not that you, you want your dad here, but because he passed away and he had given you this money and you really forgot about the money until you were presented with this situation that like, you know, the perfect dream job at the, you said it was construction work, I think. Um, like, that could have been a dream. Like, I guess what I'm getting at too is like, whenever I'm confronted with a decision, um, I always tell my kids too to like flip a coin and doesn't matter what side it lands on because you will know instantly what your decision is. Because if it lands on heads and, and you're like, oh, I don't really want to do that, then you know the other choice was what you wanted to go with. And it's interesting because you had these two different things and you totally veered and were like, nope, neither of them work for me. <laughs> I'm going to go do my own thing, <laughs> which is awesome. So how many years have you been in business now? Uh, six? It, it's going on six. June will be our sixth anniversary. The anniversary. Thank you. Nice. 
Um, so what are the ways your company is working around COVID-19 right now? So it, it's been interesting. Um, when the, the virus is something that's been impacting my industry since this onset in China in January. Mm -hmm. um, so I had been monitoring it because the majority of the products are produced overseas, China being a heavy producer of promotional right. products. And so it, it, I knew that it was going to have some impact on my business. Fast forward to March and April, never dreamed it would be this complete shutdown and pretty much a hold pattern here. Um, but it's what I learned was that it is serious that we can't brush off the directives of, you know, our government leaders and right. those telling us to stay in that that's truly important. Um, but the early days it was navigating, um, clients with orders because a lot of events were canceled and, um, trade mm. shows and community events and outreach. Right. Um, if there's no large gatherings, they didn't need to have Promotional giveaway. Products. Yeah. So the early days was redirecting shipments and canceling orders and kind of reacting to the immediate closings. Mm -hmm. The days that followed after that was navigating the high demand of hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that most people didn't really think about is that on the market, there's non-alcohol based hand sanitizer and alcohol based sanitizer. Right. The CDC recommended 62% alcohol content or higher mm -hmm. to kill the bacteria. And in the promotional products world, it, it's not clearly defined. Um, most people are not reading the teeny tiny labels with the <laughs> ingredients. Right. <laughs> Was making sure that if the clients ordered hand sanitizer, that that alcohol content was at the right um, levels. Right. Within a two week period, it was literally a one week period before um, the entire industry was wiped out of hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. um, on a Thursday, I had placed two orders for hand sanitizer, knowing that the virus was starting to spread and a couple of clients had placed it. Mm -hmm. And one of the options that was available was non-alcohol based hand sanitizer. And they had placed this order online with a competitor. There was no explanation. It was just an online portal and it was the wrong item. So we were mm -hmm. able to navigate that and they canceled the order online with you know, the, the Google company. I, I don't even know who that they used, but it was a competitor mm -hmm. and they were able to, canceled that, but that was not information that they knew. They just saw that there was hand sanitizer available. Hmm. Um, since that time, you know, I explored every factory's options. Um, the inventory is wiped out at this point, and it's looking like it's a four to eight week production cycle. Um, at this point in time, it looks like the majority of that product is being produced directly overseas and imported in. So of course there's lead times involved. Hmm. Uh, China, in fact, did not get back to production and getting back to their normal factory schedules late mid-March, end of March. Mm -hmm. And with that came a lot of backlog um, mm -hmm. in the production cycle. They're also dealing with short um, production staff because the virus is still taking place there, just not at the levels that it is here. Right. Um, but it's also causing a backlog on the shipping and the air freight carriers to get the product into the, the United States. So yeah. since then, I've been kind of navigating lead times and stuff for those types of products. But, you, I'm sorry to interrupt, but weren't you talking, we were talking at um, a networking event, you were talking about the distribution of the sanitizer, like the, the container that it comes in. You were talking about something about like not, they just didn't have enough product. Is that correct? Like not the sanitizer itself, but the container that container. holds the sanitizer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was interesting because it's made in China <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, if nobody's working there, <laughs> we yeah, don't get anything. Are, yeah. There are some domestic factories that produce the hand sanitizer gel and 
they are still in production. However, there were no containers to mm, help put it in. The, to gel. So that's another area that, again, exploring a couple different options of domestic production versus overseas production. Mm -hmm. The U.S. factories, two of them have adapted mm -hmm. to what they could put the gel in. And one of the options or solutions that they came up with was like a foil wrapper similar to what a handy wipe or some type mm -hmm. of um, individual wrap mm -hmm. wipe would come in. And they're filling these boiled wrapped papers with one ounce of gel. So they're single use packets of hand sanitizer. And that currently has about four to five weeks production time due to the sheer volume of what they're producing. That seems um, like a lot for like a waste factor in my, like that was the first thought that popped in my head. Like as far as, like I think of using wipes, but could you imagine how many people are using wipes? sanitizer wipes and then throwing them away like are they biodegradable or they are not so yeah. it, they they have the wipe where it's the cloth and you're wiping mm -hmm. um there's again i'm not a medical expert so i don't want to go on record saying something that's not um accurate but one of the based on the cdc instructions of like properly cleaning your counters and and stuff is to wipe your counters in one direction and not go back and forth. Hmm. Um, so if, if that applies to our skin and our hands, I would imagine that the wipe has similar effects where like you need to wipe in one direction because if you're just going back and forth, yeah, that makes sense. rubbing the bacteria that you're removing. Right. You want to <laughs> oh, that's interesting, yeah. Um, but the that factory that produced using the foil packets that were typically held for wipes, they were not using the wipes. They're actually using the foil packet to hold the liquid gel. Oh, so interesting. Okay. We're squeezing the gel out. Gotcha. But it's one ounce packets. So there oh, are, I understand. Both options are available. So the cloth handy wipe type, but mm -hmm. also a one ounce packet of gel itself. Gotcha. Um, I have I'm small. Sure. So the oh, one yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll kind of more than once, but I would imagine that there is going to be a lot of waste. Um, Not just a yeah, Clorox wipes alone, you know, all the, the sanitizing, you know, the ones that come in the container. I mean, I'm sure people are going through those like crazy. Yes. You know? So, yeah. What's interesting too is um, we have friends that own a distillery and they are now making hand sanitizer for the local community. They're out of Woodstown if you're in the area. Um, so that's interesting, you know, from making alcohol now to making sanitizer is definitely, I'm sure, a huge jump. But it's interesting how all the different um, companies are kind of rallying together to, you know, make new masks and um, definitely make san hand sanitizer and things like that. It's, it's interesting how um, we can get creative when we need to. And I feel that that's kind of a, a lot, a lost art a lot of times, because I think we get into this one mindset of like, well, this is the only thing that I can do with my service, my product, whatever. And there's so many different opportunities once you either are forced to, <laughs> or you open your mind to, you know, a different options that are available. Yes. You know, it, it's even in my personal story, um, when things happen and those challenges come up, you have two options. You can either see it as a problem or you can see it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's what we choose to do in those situations that brings us from point A to B or C or D. And sometimes, you know, it, it's trial by error and sometimes you make mistakes, but you never know what you're capable of doing until you have to do it. Right. And I 100% agree. Go ahead. Many I'm sorry. Of us are in that situation now. We don't know how resilient we are until we have to be. But that's the beauty. That's one of the blessings that's coming out of all of this as people are rallying together and helping one another. And as humans, I think that that's what we're made to do is help one another. And if we have a talent to make hand sanitizer because our facility is closed, then <laughs> that is gonna get us through a time that that's where the focus is, um, you know, getting the product to our medical professionals, the doctors, the nurses, the police, the fire that are on the front line so that they are safe and that in turn, right. then we're safe. 
Right, right. Working all together. Yeah, you had said something about failure, which I always find interesting. Like as kids, we were, well, I know I grew up in the ballet world. So like failure was like <laughs> not an option. Like you had to be perfect. And that was the only choice. <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> but I find now that I'm older and I understand more, it's like, well, especially even in, in my business, I, if I'm not failing, then I'm not progressing. And if you look at failure as this, like, take it, take it on upon yourself, like you're not worth it or that kind of thing. That's where I think people like, like my whole podcast and my whole theme for my company for shape it up is really stepping out of your comfort zone and going after your goals and really doing what you say you want to do. And whether that's lose weight, whether that's do an obstacle course or whatever your dream is, you have to be able to fail many times before you actually get to your goal. And I think a lot of people think, especially with weight loss, they just think, oh, well, you know, I should understand how to do this. This is so easy. Why can I not achieve this? But we learn more in failing than we do in succeeding. Absolutely. So, yeah. So what do you like best about owning a small business? I enjoy meeting new people and connecting with them and learning about their stories because when you truly listen to what people, what their why is and what they're trying to achieve, you learn a whole lot about the person and the company and the organization and the message. And then finding creative solutions to share that. Um, in my world, there's literally a million items that could be imprinted with a company message or from shirts to pens and, you know, the typical items, but there's a million products. And finding those creative solutions with the clients and connecting with them and then seeing them become successful, that is one of the things that has always helped me get up in the morning. Um, you know, cause being a small business owner, it has many good days and bad. <laughs> right. Um, and it's times where it's trying, what is the reason that I do what I do? Um, and one of the things I love is going out to networking events and meeting new people because especially smaller businesses and people that maybe don't have the budget to have a marketing staff or, um, you know, a whole team behind them to create a branding campaign that's, you know, geared with specific colors and stuff, because there's, there are cost effective ways to promote your brand or message, no matter what that may be small or large. And that's the fun part of my job. Yeah. Cause if you're not passionate about what you do, you know, you might as well pick another job. <laughs> you might as well pick the construction job. <laughs> yes. And having lived through that decision where, you know, I chose to start my own business with no certainty and all the, <laughs> um, the roadblocks or, you know, obstacles that lied ahead, knowing that it was going to be hard work, I chose that path instead of the easy route of going to the construction company. And I have not regretted that decision once in the six years, even now in this, this most challenging time, mm -hmm. I don't regret that decision because again, I have learned much and we can always grow to be better. It's that hope of getting past this, um, you know, that has kind of fueled me forward. Yeah. I always feel like I always want to level up like every, I try every day, but <laughs> Every day doesn't always happen, but I try to level up and like try to be the best version of me that I can be because I know if everybody was that, our world would be a totally different world, I think, to live in. Yeah. And I think a lot of people think they can't be entrepreneurs because they don't have the business knowledge or whatever. But nowadays with the amount of information that is available to us, like instantaneously, you can Google anything. <laughs> So like you wanted to be an entrepreneur, you know, and I do think there are some people that are more um, apt to be entrepreneurs as opposed to there are people that feel better just working for somebody else. And that's okay too. But I'm with you. I, when I jumped into my business, I never looked back and I don't ever want to work for anybody else again, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, so we're gonna jump into the speed round. Okay. And for those of you who are new, um, oh, before I jump into the speed round, I wanted to give your, um, Linda, go ahead and tell everybody where they can reach you if they have a small business and they want to investigate more promotional products or just reach out to you. So my company name is CFB Promotional Products and it's actually named after my three dogs, Creamy, Fudgy, and Bon Bon. Um, and that was to remind me to pour heart and soul into everything that I did. Um, they are the reason, my husband and they are the reason for me getting up in the morning. But the company- Wait a minute, I noticed your husband didn't get a letter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, see, right? <laughs> well, sometimes when he gets okay, we just say, oh, well, there's a C in there. That's <laughs> right. It's a silent C. <laughs> um, and since then, I've actually gotten a new puppy, and his name's Toffee, but we're not rebranding to add that to There's the child. <laughs> but the company name is CFB Promotional Products, and my website is cfbpromotionalproducts.com. But I can also be reached by phone at 856-513-6610. And I know that marketing budgets are probably um, tight right now. But if you're just looking to maybe discuss some ideas for when we get past all of this, that's another thing that I'm helping clients with now is maybe discussing ideas for down the road that kind of help when business does pick back up that they have a plan in place to reach out to that client base. Yeah, I think once we're out of this coronavirus um, impact or lockdown that everybody is going to want to be doing events. <laughs> like we're going to make up for lost time for sure. <laughs> and it's not going to be an issue. Sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to have parties on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, every day of the week. All right. So here we go for the speed round. So for anybody that's new to the podcast, um, the speed round is basically quick questions and we're just going to put them on the spot and ask <laughs> very, very uh, not in-depth questions at all. All right. So I think I know the answer to this question, but dog or cat? Dog. Coffee or tea? Favorite song? At the beginning. At the beginning. I never heard that one. It was from the cartoon Anastasia. Oh, okay. Favorite book and why? Story of a Nun by, and it's the autobiography of Mother Angelica. Okay. And that book, she came from some pretty difficult circumstances and um the path that she led just showed how courageous and brave she was and hard work and reaching out to a network of people help her build the um it, she's actually the founder of EWTM which is a TV uh network and it's global now, but to, she started in her garage and her story of how she got from one place to the other has always been inspirational to me. Oh, cool. I'll definitely have to check that out. So what is your favorite movie? Hook. Oh, with Robin Williams? With Robin okay. Williams. Robin Williams. I love Robin Williams. Oh my gosh, all this stuff. Um, so what are you binge watching right now? <laughs> are you binge watching anything? <laughs> Um, we just completed watching, uh, binge watching Jane the Virgin and okay. we just started the West Wing. I had never watched the West Wing and it's an older mm -hmm. show, but it's interesting. I think we're on season four or five. It's interesting that a lot of the issues that were taking place in the late nineties, early two thousands are similar to what is taking place now. Yeah. Um, I saw something somebody posted and I did not fact check this. So if I'm wrong, I apologize, <laughs> but it was about the Spanish flu that came out in 19, um, 1920, I think it was. And pretty sure it was 1920. They 
basically it was a picture and everybody was quarantined. They had to stay in their house exactly what is going on now, which is interesting if that happened exactly a hundred years ago, you know, they say history repeats itself. Um, so again, fact find that first, but <laughs> that was a Facebook um, post that somebody had made. So I thought that was interesting. I was like, hmm. Okay, so last question. What is your favorite inspirational quote? I don't know who said it or if I'm making it up in my head, but <laughs> be bold, be brave, be you. And I don't know where that I, came from. Yeah, I've heard that I, one too. Yes. And I think, again, right now, I think my mindset is being brave because we are going through such scary times. But one of the ways to be brave is not for tending to be something that you're not. So if you're afraid, express that fear. If you mm -hmm. have the knowledge to do something, express that too. And together we could kind of, you know, help one another, but that be brave, be bold, be you is in my head right now. So we're going to go with that. I like that one. I'll have to find out who said it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, Linda. And one more time, tell everybody where they can reach you. And if, you are listening to the podcast and you can't write down the information or if you're watching this video you can go to shapeitupfitness.com for all the show notes as well so linda tell them one more time your website and your phone number cfbpromotionalproducts.com and 856-513-6610 and do you just do locally or do you do nationwide for nationwide. your nationwide okay and the projects can be large or small. Um, if you Googled my company and Pope Francis, you'll see that we did the backpacks for when Pope Francis visited Philadelphia a few years back. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely go ahead over to that website, especially if you're a small business. You know, you may not need anything right this second, but we will be in full force, I'm sure, with all the events and all the activities once we are let out of our houses again. <laughs> so, and I think too, just from um, like my marketing brain, I don't know, like people could still order promotional products and send it to their customers right now. Yes. So there are some companies that are doing drop ship uh, packages to their employees, like a work at home kit. Mm -hmm. with pads and pens and journals so that they have the tools that they need to be efficient working at home. Um, other companies are sending out packages to first responders and nurses and doctors. In fact, I think Nurses Week is coming up in May. Um, mm. If there's ever a year we need to thank our nurses, this is it. Yeah. And also um, companies are it, it, even if the business is closed down, when people are welcome back into the workplace, there's definitely going to need to be some signage and information communicated to keep those um, workplaces safe and healthy. So even floor decals and banners and posters and stuff like that, there's, you know, products that help communicate the six foot social distancing spacing and stuff like that. Right. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for being here. And again, if you're a small business in the United States, definitely go check out their website and check out all the promotional products that they have to offer. So thank you so much for being on today, Linda. Uh, have a good day and make sure you stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Hey, if you are needing to socially distance yourself from your refrigerator in this quarantine time, I want to invite you to my free masterclass called How to Crush Your Cravings. You can head over to shapeitupfitness.com and check it out. If you want to go directly to the link, it is shapeitupfitness.com masterclass. I can't wait to see you there.